Hi everyone. I'm going to put in my tuppence worth about the now notorious Olympic gold medal winning boxers because quite a few people have asked me to and I've been feeling pretty angry so I'm well up for it. Over in this space is the famous artist Birdie Rose's new Save Women's Sports design and she has t-shirts and stuff with it available to buy from her website at the famous artist birdierose.com. I also might use in that space graphics from the other famous artist Moly, Twitter handle at mole at the door during this video. First of all, I want to confess that when I first became aware of the conflict surrounding Castor Semenya's participation in women's athletics some years ago, I paid no attention really. I just assumed that this was a case of a woman with a condition that causes severe hyperandrogenism, really hard to say that word, um, resulting in elevated levels of testosterone, thereby giving her a significant advantage over other female competitors. I'd heard of a few of them over the years. The difference in circulating testosterone levels between physically healthy men and women past puberty and with standard karyotypes without atypical conditions looks like this. The female range is a narrow 0.5 to 2.4 nanomoles per litre. The male range is a broad 10 to 35 nanomoles per litre. And note the separation. Between, there is a huge no man's land, if you like. There is no overlap, not even a tiny little bit. According to current knowledge, testosterone is the main factor in explaining why men are typically taller, stronger, faster, more powerful, etc. than women. In a previous video, I talked about this paper by developmental biologist Emma Hilton and physiologist Tommy Lundberg, which states that the performance gap between males and females, which becomes significant at puberty, often amounts to 10 to 50 percent depending on sport. Oh, before I forget, I thoroughly recommend the interview that Emma gave to Andrew Gold on his channel and the recent episode of The Mess We're In on Graham Linehan's channel, which has Emma as their guest. She's not only an expert, but a great communicator, and there is so much we can learn from her. OK, here's a graph from the Hilton and Lundberg paper. The paper also reports that punch power has been found to be 162% greater in men than women. So a punch from a man can be over two and a half times as hard as a punch from a woman. This is why we need separate and protected categories for female sport. It's about fairness and it's about safety. And both of these have been flagrantly disregarded by the International Olympics Committee, the IOC, for the Paris Olympics. So, when I first heard about Semenya, I obviously understood that for a female athlete to have a condition resulting in greatly elevated level of testosterone was unfair on other women athletes. That's why they have doping tests and sometimes athletes are disqualified. But as far as I was concerned, it had nothing to do with transgenderism, which was my focus. Unlike the New Zealand weightlifter, uh, Laurel Hubbard, Casta Semenya was not saying, yeah, I'm a male, but my gender identity is female, therefore I should have the right to compete as a woman. Semenya claimed to have been born a woman. Hubbard, by the way, would not be able to compete at the Olympics now because the International Weightlifting Federation changed its rules. Now, I'm not about to venture an opinion on what the upper limits of testosterone should be in female athletes. I'll leave that to the sports scientists and other experts. Endocrinologist David J. Handelsman 
is one of the top world experts on androgens and in this paper about testosterone in athletic performance published in 2018 he recommends an upper limit that would allow the inclusion of all women other than those with untreated hyperandrogenic disorders of sex development and he sets that limit at five nanomoles per litre so that's just over double the upper end in healthy women but it does allow the inclusion of many women with polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS as it's called which is a hormonal disorder that causes a mild to moderate elevation of testosterone and is in fact the most common cause of hyperandrogenism I'm going to try not to say that word again um, in women of child bearing age but still very much lower than the lowest level in healthy males and I now understand that Castor Semenya isn't female with that awful condition but male with a very rare 46 XY disorder of sex development called 5-alpha reductase deficiency syndrome 5-ARD for short for the purpose of this video suffice it to say that it inhibits in the male fetus the development of external genitalia so boys born with this condition have an underdeveloped penis a micro penis often giving the impression that they are in fact female at birth they also have undescended testes so their sex at birth can be wrongly recorded as female in which case they are believed by their families to be female and they are raised as girls once a child with 5 ARD hits puberty his internal testes will produce testosterone and masculinize his face and body and he may well produce viable sperm I hear that Castor Semenya has fathered two children he's a man now unlike the weightlifting governing body the International Boxing Association the IBA has never in theory allowed men to box women but it transpires that in practice it's been happening for some years to my knowledge the story that the two boxers Iman Khalif of Algeria and Lin Yuting of Taiwan had been disqualified from competing against women by the IBA that story was broken by the fantastic redux.info website on 27th of July they accurately reported that the disqualifications were because the boxers had been tested and found to have XY chromosomes which means they are genetically male the IBA defines males as those having XY chromosomes a lot of people seem to have picked up the idea that objections to them are because they are thought to be transgender and aren't we silly to think Algeria would have trans women representing them no that's a straw man okay Donald Trump seems to think Khalif is trans but I think most of us who object are better informed than Donald Trump about this many media sites have specifically stated that neither boxer identifies as trans or uh, as what they call intersex our objection is against men in women's sport whatever the reason a few days ago Redux also reported that in an interview with a Spanish radio station the technical commissioner of the Spanish boxing team revealed that Khalif was found to be too dangerous for women to train against during a boxing retreat in Spain whichever female boxer they put Khalif against got injured and they ended up pairing Khalif with one of Spain's top male boxers instead this man the uh, commissioner said he thought it was unfair and dangerous to women to let Khalif compete against them okay I'm all about arguments on this channel and what I wanted to do was examine the arguments on both sides of this thing but actual arguments in support of the boxers have been thin on the ground it's mostly just been statements without any serious reasoning to back them up this one from the effing 
idiot Rufus Hound is typical. He's apparently quite well known in the UK as some sort of comedian. That's what he identifies as. I'm going to go through the other ones I've found, but I'll leave out the nuttiest ones like um, Khalif's physique is because he grew up in the mountains or something and the objections um, are just racism. I'll also dispense quickly with the silly one about Michael Phelps because I've dealt with it before. This is how it goes. Nobody was disqualifying Michael Phelps for having particular biological features that allowed him to excel in swimming, said medical anthropologist and an adjunct professor somebody or other. It's not just in sports, but in every field of life that some people have natural advantages over each other. Advantages over which they have no control. You might study or work or train as hard as the next person, but if, thanks to your genes, that person happens to have more natural ability and achieves a better result than you do, of course you're not going to accuse them of cheating. Every sportsman or woman wants and rightfully expects the competition to be as fair as it can be if we're going to let men with all their natural physical advantage compete in women's sports why keep weight classes in combat sports let promising school-aged children compete against already accomplished athletes for titles i wonder what michael phelps himself thinks oh there you are he thinks of it like having to compete against someone on performance enhancing drugs and Mark Adams of the IOC helpfully articulated two of the main arguments in an interview he gave to Sky Sports. I won't play clips because he annoyingly reminds me of his good mate Keir Starmer. I'll just tell you what he said. First up, these women were born as girls. Girls? What? These two? This is a clear and categorical statement from Adams and the first question it surely raises is how do you know? Okay, the implied question is if they were born girls, how the hell did they grow up to look like they do? And I will open that can of worms in a minute. What I'll say just now is that I am flabbergasted at the number of people on Twitex who repeated this statement without question. A lot of people seem to be convinced by childhood pictures like this one showing Khalif, who is the taller child, apparently dressed as a girl and having a girly hairstyle. What these photos suggest is that Khalif was raised as a girl because his poor parents believed he was one. Why would they believe that? Most probably because of the appearance of his genitals at birth. Given what he looks like now, it seems most likely that he has the same condition as Casta Semenya. And that is what I believe, that both Khalif and Lynn have five ARD. This episode has been a lesson in how deluded and dishonest people can get from the fan artist on Instagram producing images of Khalif looking like this. These are intended to be serious tributes to Khalif. They're not trying to be funny. To the desperado who took the Facebook profile photo of a beautiful Algerian woman called Kahina Mohammed D and with very artificial intelligence turned it into a photo of what Khalif might have looked like had he actually been a woman. But they pretended it was really him saying this is what Khalif looks like um, dressed up for a night out. So many people reposted this apparently in good faith. And I've seen people claiming that the boxers literally have vaginas and uteri. My favourite one of all was that Khalif has given birth. There is no evidence in the public domain that either of them has a female reproductive system or any part of one. The next thing Mark Adams tells us is they are registered as female. They have female passports. And that is his final 
answer. That is the IOC position. They are female because it says so on their passports. I'm reminded of an exchange I had on Twitter years ago. It was um, 2018 with Stephanie Hayden, no less. He asked me why the law and indeed the government do not share my view. Both institutions are clear that trans women are women, he said. And I gave the obvious response that laws and government policy aren't necessarily based on scientific truths. He responded with uncharacteristic grace, saying it was a fair enough reply, Maria, lol. Unfortunately, I haven't seen this point about legal documents not necessarily reflecting reality being put to Mark Adams or IOC President Thomas Bach in any interview. And it is clear that they do not base their policies now on any kind of science. I've seen Thomas Bach's incredible statement that we have two boxers who are born as a woman, who have been raised as a woman, who have a passport as a woman and who have competed for many years as a woman and this is the clear definition of a woman. There was never any doubt about them being a woman. What? What we see now is that some want to own the definition of who is a woman and there I can only invite them to come up with a scientific based new definition of who is a woman and how can somebody be born, raised, competed and having a passport as a woman cannot be considered a woman. If they are coming up with something, we are ready to listen, blah, blah. But we will not take part in a sometimes politically motivated cultural war. Is it that he is stupid or does he think we are? Obviously, they are not only taking part in the war, they are on the front line of it. They have caused an intensification of it and they have helped us on the rocky road to victory. Bach's doltish comments are a consequence of gender ideology and the legal fiction it has produced in some of our countries muddying the waters around the meanings of male and female. Gender identity is given priority over sex and allows men to win medals punching women. Next up from Mark Adams. They have competed for the last six or seven years in senior competition. They've won bouts and they've lost bouts as women. Right, obviously the fact that they've been competing as women for some years doesn't make them women and doesn't make it okay that they are continuing to compete as women. As I said on X, it's like the argument, oh, but trans women have been using the ladies' toilets for years. So? No, it's the lost bouts that is significant here because some people seem to see this as a real gotcha. How can they be men? How can they be endangering women if they've lost fights against women? Well, I'm not claiming to know much about boxing, but is boxing only about strength and power? Is there no skill involved? I looked it up and there is, apparently. A lot of it is footwork. I suppose that means moving on your feet and balancing and not kicking them in the wherever pivoting, ducking, blocking, as well, of course, as how to do the different kinds of punches, jabs and hooks and crosses and rabbit punches, which are punches to the back of the head or base of the skull, as demonstrated by Lin Yuting here to his female opponent, Ezra Yildiz Karaman of Turkey, and which is in fact illegal because it is notorious for its potential to cause severe and irreversible injuries, including spinal cord injury or even instant death. That was perilously close to being more than a ticking off for me. Perilously close to getting more than a ticking off. <gasps> But could it be that the more experienced the boxer, the better skills they have? Could that be why those two men have been beaten by some women? Maybe, but hang on. 
By the time the Italian Angelo Carini met Iman Khalif in their preliminary match, Khalif had about 50 fights under his belt, and Carini had more than double that number. Yet she bailed out after 46 seconds in fear of her life because of the sheer force behind his punch. Look at the difference in the muscularity of their arms. Testosterone also enhances bone density, by the way. Compare that with what he looked like two years ago when he was defeated by the Irish lass Amy Broadhurst in the final of the Women's World Boxing Championships. Amy is in red and of the two of them, she's the one that seems to be built like a brick shit house, as they say. So I'd suggest that it's probably a combination of experience, skill and strength on the part of the women and Khalif not being as strong and skillful as he is now that caused him to lose a small minority of his matches or as well trained as he is now. I read an interview, uh, Georges Cazola, who took Khalif under his wing, I think early in 2023 and put him on a rigorous training program. In that interview, Cazola confirms Khalif got the test results showing he was male and says Khalif was devastated by the news. He also states that Khalif was put on a program to bring his testosterone down to female levels. Go figure. Kazala is the president of the Association for Research and Evaluation in Physical Activity and Sport, a scientific advisor who has also taught biology. He said he was disgusted at the disqualification. He said that Khalif was a girl because she was born a girl, raised a girl and has a girl's sensitivity. May God help us if she exists. Now, still on the issue of what they look like, here is the weirdo Jeffrey Marsh in a video. Because she doesn't like the way they look. She doesn't like the way that they act. She doesn't like the way that they talk. She doesn't like what they're doing in their sport. I won't show any more because he really goes to town on his libeling of JKR, but he is repeating a claim I've seen dozens of times since on social media, which is that our objections are solely on what they look like. This one, for example, is claiming that JK Rowling fans are calling Khalif a man because of how he looks. So, based on looks, is this a man or a woman then? And he's showing a photo of Fatima Whitbread, who was very muscular at the height of her athletic career but who went on to conceive and birth her son. So regardless of what she's looked like at any stage, she's passed a sex test. Khalif failed a sex test. Why are they having trouble grasping that this is what it's about? Female boxers tend to be pretty muscular. Obviously, you'd be forgiven for mistaking Broadhurst and Khalif here uh, being two men in the ring. Out of the ring, not so much because Amy, a straight woman, embraces cultural ideas about femininity and Khalif doesn't, nor does Lynn Yuting, seen here looking camp as Christmas. There's nothing wrong with any of these choices of appearance, but other women whose faces Khalif has more successfully punched in than Amy's are no more feminine than he is. Take, for example, the woman who eventually won bronze, but should have been silver, Jianjiam Suan Suan Feng. Sorry, I can't pronounce it right. This woman obviously does not care to pander to cultural expectations of femininity. Is anyone calling her a man because of how she looks? Not as far as I know. I do think she looks more female than either Khalif or Lynn because of her slightly full of face and dainty little chin. But if she had been reported as failing a genetic test and being XY, we would have believed it, wouldn't we? Well, maybe those who've heard her voice would be surprised. <laughs> doesn't sound like a voice that has 
broken because she's gone through a male puberty. I'm not sure we can say the same for Lin. 那再来就是，真正接触到拳击应该是上国中的时候。But the point I really want to ram home is that at the bottom line, it's not about looks and it's not about voices. The reason thousands of people are saying Lin and Khalif are men now, when they haven't done in the past, is because the IBA reported that they had both been tested and shown to have XY chromosomes. One of the silliest claims I've seen made in this whole debacle is that Khalif was disqualified because of sour grapes because he had beaten the previously undefeated and unmistakably female Russian boxer Azalia Amineva at the World Championships in March 2023. The time frame of when things happened knocks that one on the head, a bit like. Lin Yuting did to the Turkish girl. The letter informing Khalif of his disqualification is now in the public domain. It is dated 24th March. At the bottom is Khalif's signature acknowledging receipt on the same day. The letter clearly states that Khalif had been tested on 17th March. According to the minutes of the meeting of the IBA Board of Directors, which ratified the proposal to disqualify. The two of them, and those minutes are on the IBA website. The lab results took seven days, from the 17th of March, to come back, and both boxers were immediately notified of those results on the 24th of March. The schedule of matches at the World Championships shows that Khalif had no matches prior to being tested. His first match, which was against Amineva, took place on the 21st of March, four days after being tested, but before the results came back, obviously. But because he was disqualified three days after he'd defeated her, people commit the what's it called post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy. Oh, that's why it's because he beat the Russian. I have to wonder why it doesn't occur to people to check these things before making idiots of themselves. It's not hard. The most frequent reason people are now giving for believing that these two are female <laughs> is that the IBA is a corrupt Russian-dominated organization, so they must be lying. That doesn't add up because plenty of people have confirmed that they had seen the results, including Khalif's great supporter and trainer, Shosh Kasola. Including the IOC, what the IOC did, what Mark Adams has done, is claim it was a sudden and arbitrary decision without due process. He's also made snarky insinuations that the results might not be reliable because of the IBA's recent past and concerns about mismanagement and financial irregularities and other stuff, which resulted in it being stripped of its authority to. Host the boxing at the Olympic Games. This is one prong of their two-pronged approach. One is to cast aspersions like that. The other is to deny that having an XY karyotype makes the boxers male. I will say that the one thing that convinced me above anything else that these two boxers failed a legitimate genetic test. Are the writings of Alan Abrahamson, in which he reports having seen the test results, and they weren't carried out in some little garden shed outfit, but in the independent Dr. Lal Path Labs, which has testing centres all over India. He writes, for both Khalif and Lin, the result summary is abnormal. Interpretation. Chromosome analysis reveals male karyotype, and there is photographic representation of the results. The lab is a national reference lab accredited by the College of American Pathologists and certified by the International Organization for Standardization. 
Abrahamson is a highly respected sports writer and a renowned expert on the Olympic Games. He has no reason to lie. I trust his word and his judgment. I can't say the same for Mark Adams of the IOC. The last thing um, Adams said in that interview that I want to highlight is about sex testing. He referred to what he called the bad old days of Olympic sport in the 20th century when women athletes had to undergo sex testing. It was humiliating, he said, and against their human rights. Got that? humiliating and against their human rights to check that people who claim to be female are in fact female, but not remotely humiliating or against the human rights of women to get their lights punched out by men who are claiming to be women. Emma Hilton did a long and very informative thread on ex about te sex testing. I'll read a little bit of it. In 1999, sex testing was abolished given the unusual results popping in the female athletes, the potential for trauma in those athletes, and the prevailing opinion that having a male XY DSD probably didn't matter in female sport. Of course, today, that prevailing opinion from over two decades ago has been overturned. We understand more about sports performance male advantage and what anatomical features contribute to it. We have far easier and cheaper ways of looking at chromosomes and DNA and we have stronger ethical frameworks regarding genetic testing. The bad old days that the IOC evoked to obstruct sex testing that would protect the female category is a red herring. Today Testing for sex is routine, our sampling is better, and we can find sex chromosomes from really small amounts of suboptimal material, etc, etc. If the two boxers or their respective governments wanted to prove beyond reasonable doubt that they were female, they could get a simple, non-humiliating, painless sex test, cheek swab, independently of the IBA and make the results public, but they won't because they know they are genetically male and that their physiques have benefited from male levels of circulating testosterone. The IOC knows it too, and they've decided to abandon scientific truths, fairness and safety for women and the moral high ground and pursue a purely ideological line that what's important is being inclusive of men. Which, of course, leads to the inevitable exclusion of women. This position is untenable in the long term. It will change, hopefully, before another illegal rabbit punch is delivered by a man to the back of a woman's head. Hopefully, before a woman is seriously injured or killed. Hopefully, Sebastian Coe will replace Thomas Bach as president of the IOC next year and he will behave with his characteristic integrity and keep his promise to stand up for women's sports. I think he will. That's all. <laughs>